That's Herman Jr. Cook, a tenor saxophone, working out with Cedar Walton. At the moment, we've caught him on an intermission off stand at uh, the Artist Quarter at 26th and Nicollet in Minneapolis, where he's appearing this weekend. Herman Cook, are you there? Yes, indeed. Yeah, you got my full credentials there, yes. Well, it is good to hear you, Junior Cook. Oh, and thank you so much, sir. I'm uh, glad to be here. Well, uh, it's a Again, pri- you know. privilege to sit in with you off stage like this. Yes, I thank you so much, man, because uh, I don't get this treatment back home. <laughs> <laughs> well... For some reason, I don't know why, you know... Well, for whatever reason, we're we're just happy to have you on the line. And, and I remember last night when you and I were talking just yeah. briefly, there were some memories of the Apollo Theater. Oh, yeah. When you uh, were very young, you said you used to go up in the balcony and catch all the artists. That's, yeah, when I first came uh, to New York, you know, you could go there and they would show a movie and, and they would have, like, the band. They have certain artists come out, Sonny Stitt, I saw him there, and... Uh, Earl Bostic, all the bands, so I was going really to hear the music, you know. And I'd sit up there, and then I'd stay all day, and, uh, you know, I'd go to sleep on the movie, <laughs> take a little, little sandwich with me and stuff. And uh, I was really going to see the uh, music all the way, you know, and I'd stay all day. I mean, like, from when they open to almost till they close, you know, I'd doze off some on the movie and wake up when the band come back on. That was great. That was part of your uh, your your academy, your learning experience. Yes, indeed, yes, indeed. You know. Well, you've also I'm been from uh, you know from Pensacola, Florida. Yes, and your father and older brother were, were musicians. Yeah, huh? and uh, also uh, you know Gigi Grice was from my hometown. Well, I was about to mention Gigi. If I if I mention his name, and as you have dropped it, uh, mm-hmm. he has a very important part of uh, indeed in your career. Music, yeah, not only in mine and many. And I like Quincy Jones, and uh, Gigi Grice was one of the first guys that start uh, uh, getting uh, 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 the music companies to give them uh, credit for their compositions. So what they used to do, they used to you make a record, and you would have to give the uh, company the credit and the royalties. Yeah, all that stuff. So and uh, he kind of paid a little price for that. But he, he's the first guy who was instrumental in getting, uh, you know, a lawyer and saying, you know, getting what you should get. And they kind of blacklisted him for that and stuff. He had to write a lot of some tunes under a assumed name, Lee Sears and, and stuff. Uh, those were pseudonyms, weren't they? Yes, you know, because uh, they kind of laid on him for that because before then they took advantage of guys who unfortunate, unfortunately had, you know, little habits or whatever and stuff and you know, you know how that is. But anyway, we don't want to uh, uh, concentrate on the negative. But anyway, he was kind enough. I didn't. He was in school with my. See, we had the same music teacher, a guy named Ray Shep. He was great. And my older brother was in school with Gigi, so he's about ten years older than me. And that was the high school. I didn't really meet him until, you know, I came to New York. But I wrote him, and he wrote me back and sent me some of his compositions and encouraged me. And I met his brother, Tommy Grass, who's in uh, Trenton now. He's been teaching school over there, just about retiring now. And and he's a beautiful musician, too, you know. I can remember, too, that Gigi Grice, along with Clifford Brown and with um, yes. Quincy Jones, were all graduates yes. of Lionel Hampton's band. Yeah, that's why, you know. And they were paying dues then, and they uh, were over there, and they, we got some records that they made. They had to slip out the hotel and and go and do this record date down in some basement and stuff because, you know, you was in uh, Ham's band. You were not supposed to do anything else on your own, you know. That was a, a, a very exactly. disciplined setup, wasn't it? Yeah. So was, those are the kind of things were happening then. But uh, fortunately, the music always overcomes all odds. <laughs> and it really makes it worthwhile. Yeah, and that's why I'm still here. You know, I'm in... Uh, 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 kind of people are surprised when I come out. And say, oh, boy, is this, you still alive? <laughs> are you still, you know? But uh, well, you're a young man. Yeah, but you know the reason I started playing the music. The music grabbed me, and I was fortunate enough to hear these people and come along. And uh, this is what I wanted to do. You know, I wish I, you know, I don't need anything more. You know, if I could pay next month rent on time after 30 years, it'd be cool. But, uh, you know, when I come out, I'm very proud of this music and 
and I'm very proud to be a part of it. And uh, I'm guess maybe you can make an analogy. I know the old, old dad would, what they say, dad with your boots on, the old gunfighters, well, I dad with my read on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Come on, I guess. <laughs> Junior <laughs> Cook. Uh, we love the music, and, you know, and... Uh, um, uh, when I come out, I don't do any walkthroughs. I walk over. I give up 200 percent, and I've never, uh, uh, you know, I don't believe that I have to play down to my audience, and I never have had anybody that, you know, we could, didn't communicate. So I feel like, uh, you know, they say you got to play this for the audience and this do this. That's a lot of uh, stuff. It, I mean, you ought to be true to yourself and coming from the heart, and I don't believe nobody, I haven't met anybody yet, didn't feel, you know, when you were playing the truth. Junior Cook, I know you speak you the truth. <laughs> I know you uh, speak and perform uh, in a very truthful way. Some of the composers that uh, you seem to like, uh, if I mention Tad Dameron. Oh, yeah, well, see, these guys, that was Tad Dameron. And out of time, them are on, and you know, after that, we we'll learn from them. I've, I was fortunate enough to meet these guys, and uh, Jimmy Heath, Slide Hampton, all these guys, uh, you know, learned from him, and that's what I learned from. And basically, what I feel about my music, and this music, and what they're about, is melody and feeling. But even if you're playing fast, you know, you know, we're always singing, and the melodic. This, the sound and uh, tone, I, I call it the three T's, tone, taste, and time. <laughs> On that note, Junior Cook, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to call time because we're... Hey, time out. <laughs> <laughs> for the well, thank you so much, man. Oh, and we'll see you on stand at the okay. Artist Quarter. Thanks so much for... Go ahead and tell them to bring me back soon. <laughs> I shall. I'll raise thank my right so hand. Thank you so much for taking time out with me. Pleasure talking you. with you. All right, thank you so much.